Hello, my name's Harry and welcome to the second video in a series of videos looking at the 4191A impedance analyzer and how to control it from within Excel. Um, on the left here you'll see an example plot that you can extract from the machine. Uh, it shows uh, an open and, uh, and a short plotted onto a Smith's chart. So this is displayed in Z plots. So this is the ultimate goal to show you how to achieve this from within the machine. Um, a couple of prerequisites for uh, driving this machine from Excel. Firstly, you'll need to have the developer tag tab enabled on your software, on your Excel package. I'm using t Excel 2007 and you uh, enable the uh, developer tab under more commands, popular, and you'll see show developer tab. If you're using a later version of Excel, you should Google uh, that version to discover how to display the developer tab. Once you have the developer tab, uh, you'll need to uh, go to the view codes. Now this is, the, uh, this is, a, this is a, an accompanying program that allows you to write some visual basic code that runs within the Excel workbook. And you need to uh, point Excel to a reference to, a reference to a library file that was um, uh, installed as part of the Agilent I.O. library suite. Um, on my machine the file is located on the C drive so we'll just navigate to that. It's down, it's in program 86. It's in the IVI foundation folder. Get in there, here we go. IVI foundation. and it's in the Visa folder, and it's the Visa.com folder, and the file is the Global Manager DLL. Okay, so you can see now we've got a reference and we've ticked to that. There's the program location. Uh, you do need to have this file as a reference within Excel for it to talk over GPIV. Okay, they're the two prerequisites to uh, controlling instruments from within Excel. Uh, we can now have a look at the software. Okay, so I'll put a link to the software at the end of the video so you can download it. You're welcome to use it uh, free of charge. It's provided uh, without any warranty. Uh, and uh, obviously there are, you need to enable macros. So you've downloaded this code from the internet. It's your responsibility to do a virus check on it before you run it. Um, first thing you need to do is provide the instrument address. In my occasion it's address 16. You're then asked to provide a save location. I'll use the download folder. Uh, next thing you're asked to do is to open the you'll open the connection to the machine. So this my machine's connected over the GPIB bus to this computer. So we'll open the connection. Open GPIB. Now I've added some audio annotation to the code, so it just lets you follow along. Uh, since we've just connected to the machine, uh, it would be sensible to do a reset, reset just to return the machine to its default condition. So this is the control software. This is a piece of uh, Visual Basic code running within an Excel workbook. And if you look here at the front panel of the machine, you can see it's got display A, display B, and a frequency window. And that's matched over here on the Excel workbook with a frequency window, display A, and display B. So you can decide how the information from the machine will be displayed. And you can see you've got a number of formats that the information can be displayed in. Currently, it's in uh, resistance and reactive impedance react so it's a uh, reactive components you can also have the reflection coefficients or indeed uh, lumped components so you can have it as L or C values okay okay so it's quite a versatile machine um, just walking through the, the interface, uh, the user can enter the start and stop frequencies, the step frequencies, and the spot frequency. Uh, the machine will calculate the number of measurements that will be made over that frequency range. This analyzer is also capable of doing a voltage sweep, and so you can set the start and stop voltage sweeps from plus or minus 40 volts. You can set the size of the voltage step and the, 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 the point, the, the, the parked voltage that it will be measuring at and it'll give you the number of steps. You've got some offsets for the screen, so if you're doing component measurement, you can enter a default component, and you can see how far it deviates from that component. 
Um, this open capacitance refers to the APC7 connector and it's the fringe capacitance, which is the default value. If you're using a different uh, test fixture, if it's got a different fringe capacitance when you're calibrating the machine, you'd enter that here. Uh, the electrical length is the the distance that the calibration plane has been moved uh, for your, to your point of measurement. Uh, your sweep type can be linear or log, and you've got a, a high speed and low speed mode for sweeping. So high, high speed is just one sample, and the normal speed would be four, an average of four samples. And you can decide if the sweep is going to be up or down, or if it's going to be a manual sweep. You've got interpolation, which is for the uh, an option contained within the machine, of the below four option. And then normally the trigger mode would be left to internal. So you can alter any of these parameters and you can save them within the package, software package, in one of four locations and you can give it your own name to, to define it and then any time you can recall that to the front panel. Once you've recalled a number of settings you can send them to the machine by hitting the all button and those a machine is now configured as for this front panel here. Okay so um, the uh, the other thing you need to do is you need to calibrate the machine. Now I'll actually have to show, cover this in more detail in the next video, but just to briefly say that the 4191A can retain one set of calibration data. Uh, so every time you change the frequency range, if it's outside the calibration range, you'll need to do a new calibration. And you're just, just warning you that it's going to overwrite the existing cal data and do you want to proceed. Okay, so more on that in the next video. But that's a brief introduction to the user interface. Uh, in the next video, we'll calibrate the machine, and then later on, we'll extract information from the machine and display it in Z plots. Okay, see you in the next video.